Hi guys and welcome to Reality with T. So now I'm going to review um, Ayana Fix My Life episode 3 of this season. And this is with Lunel the comedian. So I, um, I never really found Lunel to be that funny. Um, I mean she's not somebody that I sought out to... To, to look at her stand-ups, so maybe she is. And I also, when I see her in some of her acting roles, I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, but, you know, she has been in the business for decades, and she is a established comedian, and she is, you know, she, she makes good money. So, you know what I mean? She's, she's a celebrity, um, but it's just a personal preference. But either way, I did really like um, this interaction she had with Ayana. I did like this. Um, this is a common situation with a lot of celebrities. I saw it when I think little Mo, not little Mo, um, Monifa was on there with her daughter. Like a lot of celebrities, the issue is when they get big and they have to start traveling and touring and they are making money in order to raise their child and they leave their child with somebody like Erica Mena or Drea. Um, they leave their child with their mother or whoever it is. They're raised by somebody else, aunt or uncle. As much as they still think that they're there for the child and they are there monetarily, the child feels abandoned or separated from their mom and it ends up, they end up harboring anger because they feel like you left me. And essentially that's what it looks like because you're out there being a celebrity, you're partying, you're on red carpet, you're doing the whole thing and I'm here being raised by somebody else. When it, when it comes down to is I just want to be with my mom and they don't understand that. Okay. So either way, we start out the, um, the episode with Lunel. Um, she makes her put on, like, do a short set, like a quick little comedy set. And Ayana says, no, you do that immediately. You know what I mean? And she, what she talked about, she realized, she talks about how Lunel masks her pain. And a lot of comedians do that. We Richard Pryor um, did that. A lot of the best comedians. Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx was somebody who was, I don't know if his mother passed away or she left him as well, but he was raised by his, I think he was adopted by his grandmother at a very young age. He also just lost his sister who has down, who had Down syndrome. You know, Jamie Foxx has been through a lot. Richard Pryor has been through a lot. He was raised in a whorehouse. Um, and I think by his mom or grandmother, one of them was the, uh, what is that called? Not the pimp, but what do they call The madam. And, um, you know, he's been through a lot. He's been through drugs. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like they dig deep and they, um, like they make from that pain, they turn it into comedic relief. And it's funny for us, but they really are, you know, like Kevin Hart had put like, you know, laugh at my pain. Even though I think Kevin Hart's a little bit different. I don't know his story. I probably should see his documentary or something. I don't find him that funny. I find the people like Richard Pryor who actually do like more realistic comedy I find them to be more funny than, you know, people who do like, kind of like more like slapstick comedy. But either way. So, you know, she talks about, Lunell talks about the issue with, I guess she must have a reputation in the industry of being kind of difficult to work with, kind of fire, like a firecracker type of person. And she says, you know, I want to play down the angry black woman thing. And it just made me make a note, make an aside that like, granted, I understand it too. A lot of times black women are stereotyped. Um, just the way I talk sometimes, and even by my own family members, even by people, my friends, my family members, if I get passionate in my voice and I start talking a little bit louder, you know what I mean? And I have a serious face and I'm just passionate. It could be about Michael and Janet Jackson, who knows? It can come off or seem like I'm angry or I'm whatever. And I've been called that before, you know, oh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. What are you getting upset about? That? And it's so annoying. And it's like, I'm just trying to express myself. This is my way of expressing myself. I don't mean this to come off that way. I don't really know how I'm coming off. I'm just passionate about what I'm saying. You know what I mean? So there is, obviously there is a stereotype that black women, we can't be, you know, outspoken or boisterous or passionate or whatever without being called angry. So of course we don't want to fit into that mold, but we also have a lot of things. We have a lot of situations, a lot of things that happen to us that we should be angry about, right? Like, just like they say, the black woman is the most disrespected woman, you know, on the planet, right? So that is something to be angry about. We go through a lot of different situations where we should be angry. So when we say we don't want to be like the angry black woman, like what if I am? What if I do have a lot to be angry about? The woman in the last Ayana episode who was raped and molested and this and that, and now she's taking a lot of that out on her husband. She has a lot to be angry about. I'm not excusing her behavior. You know, you go, you, you might want to sit with somebody and work on what it is that you're angry about, but it doesn't, but we, some women 
everybody. Some people have a lot to be angry about. You know what I mean? So, and apparently when we get deeper into her story, she has a lot to be angry about. And she's taken on normally, as usual, we take it out on the wrong people. It's called displacement. We take it out on the people that are closest to us. Our husbands, our kids, our family members, right? That's This is how it happens. So either way. So, you know, she talks about that. And Ayana asks, well, is that working for you? And she says, well, I guess it is. You know, I came as far as I am. You know, and she says, but at the same time, you know, and, and Luna, she says, who's the best comedian? And Luna says, I'm the best. You know what I mean? There's no shortness of confidence. And so she said, well, if you are the best, Shouldn't you carry yourself like the best, right? And I said, oh, that makes sense, you know? And she says, all this anger that you're exerting and that you're holding on to is just baggage from your past. So once you let that go, you know what I mean? You don't have to just, you don't have to lash out at people because what you're doing is you're pushing people away from you. You're a good person, right? You're this and that. Why push people away? You know what I mean? Why don't you want people to embrace you and want to be around you and not, you know, put you into that box of, of angry black women woman? Because if that's how you're acting, that's what you're gonna be seen as, right? So, you know, Ayana talks to the daughter and she says, you know, she didn't see her mom much as a child. She says she was always leaving. Yes, she took care of my needs. She sent me to college, no loan. She did this and that, but, you know, she's a celebrity. I never saw her, right? And she says, you know, I don't really even know who she really is, and she doesn't know who I really am, and I feel like it's, it may be too late. You can tell that her daughter loves her. She also is very cautious about really upsetting her because she also doesn't want to push her mother away any further than what she is. So, you know, she says, I, if I try to talk to my mom... I feel like I'm attacking her. And it was interesting that Ayana said, all mothers do. That's, that's, and I'm like, oh, okay. So that's what it is. Because I have seen a lot of people, even with Shea Bucky Johnson, they say the same thing. Or, you know, but whenever that, that whenever we express ourselves to our parents, our mothers, mothers feel attacked. Because, and I'm thinking as a mother, you, in our heads, we're thinking, I put so much into this child. I'm giving them my all, my best, my everything. And for them to say that I'm not doing something right, it has to hurt, right? So my kids aren't old enough yet to express themselves to me, but I'm just thinking about it in the future. Would I feel attacked? I guess, maybe, I don't know. We have to see when I get there, right? But it's very interesting that she was like, all mothers feel that way. So I'm gonna keep that in mind, okay? So she says, I, I can't be honest with my mother because she is so short-tempered and I feel like she's gonna attack me. And I can understand that, you know what I mean? Because sometimes... When we feel attacked, we're going to attack back, right? We're going to become defensive. We're, we want to hurt you before you get to hurt us, right? We're going to get to you before you get to our soft spot. So I can see what she's saying. But you can tell that she really wants to connect with her mother. The, the, the daughter is kind of like, as from what we can see, kind of soft-spoken, kind of tempered a little bit. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, it's, I was rooting for the daughter because I'm like, I, I can understand where you're coming from. So... You know, she asks, is your mother a good person? And she kind of says, well, I get, sometimes I feel like she's not a good person because of the way that she talks to me. So apparently, Lou Nulel can have a mouth on her and she can be pretty nasty, okay? So, you know, she says, the, your mother, Lunel, is relating to you from a place of guilt and not as a woman. So she is relating to her daughter from a place of, I know that I did wrong. I wasn't there for her. And that's how I'm relating with her. And kind of relating with her as if she's still a child and not the grown woman that she is, right? So we're going to go deeper into that one, I believe, right? So either way, she says, you know, the daughter says, we kind of just play roles. We don't really have an authentic relationship. It's very surface level. I don't think she knows me for who I am. I don't know who she is because it feels like they're just kind of both tiptoeing around each other. I'm not going to say anything too deep. I'm not going to tell too much. I'm not going to talk about it because they both feel like they're going to be attacked and they have to protect their soft space. So she talks to Lunell. And so she says, no, Lunell at this time, while she's talking to daughter, Lunell was left up in a room by herself for a few hours, right? Excuse me. And she was having a hard time waiting, right? And so she's like, I may leave. I want to break some effing windows. You know, what kind of the process is this where you leave the people to themselves and to process and the whole thing? And so, 
you know, it was interesting because Ayana said, well, number one, you said earlier that you needed control. So this is how you deal with not being in control. You weren't in control of my time schedule, right? During this time, I was spending a lot of time with your daughter. So yes, you did spend some time up here by yourself, but that's also part of the process. And as you notice, Ayana likes to separate people, leave them by themselves. And the issue with Linnell is that she can't be by herself, right? And also the thing is with celebrities, when, she, when Ayana has the celebrities on here, I'm usually not a fan. Like, I like the other episode where we had, like, some people that were just normal people. I like that. With celebrities, they are used to everybody doing what they want. They control everybody. They have a whole bunch of yes people around them. They do whatever they want, right? So when they come to Ayana and they're not in control of everything, in control of the process and what they're doing and time and everything, they really, they can't even deal with it. They throw hissy fits. They throw temper tantrums. So, you know... Ayana tells her, you know, she, you, you, you use food, laughter, other people to avoid feeling. So basically, and I see a lot of people, even with Tamar Braxton, surround herself with people, people around her all the time, right? You don't really have to make too many decisions when you have people around you because every decision you make, should we have pizza or chicken? You got somebody to say something, chicken, chicken, chicken. Should I have fries? I, you know, people are telling you what to do every step of the way. You're not doing anything by yourself. You also are distracted from actually feeling what's going on, dealing with anything real life. You know what I mean? Um, this is your way. Hey, it's like an addiction. You know what I mean? Like she said, food, making people laugh, the whole thing. This is all a cover-up of what's underneath, which is like dealing with some of your real issues. So she says, so Lunell says, you know, if you, if this was meant to trigger me, because she was talking to the, the woman who's a doctor at one point, she said, this was meant to trigger me. This is what happened. Being alone does trigger me from being in the past, not being able to get to my kid, not having stimuli. It almost made me feel like she had a, there was a point where she was in jail for a little while or someplace isolated. And I don't know her history. I would have to look that up because she says there was no stimuli. I couldn't get to my daughter. And so I'm thinking she was in a place that was quiet not a lot of noise, no people around, and she was unable to get to her when she needed to. I don't know. Maybe I'm making that up, but that was just what I got from the conversation. She says, um, it triggered feelings of abandonment for me. I've been abandoned by my dad, my mom, my siblings. And then you find out that her dad was murdered while her mother was pregnant with her. So she never met dad. Her mother had seven kids and gave away her eighth kid. And I guess that was Lunell for adoption. Okay, so she was raised, I believe, by her aunt and her uncle. So then we find out that um, she was raised by the aunt, um, sorry, the aunt and her, the aunt's husband. The aunt's husband was abusive and she feels that nobody saved her. They allowed her to be abused. So she said when she saw her daughter, because she didn't get to see her that often because she was off working. When she went to see her daughter, she just kind of, she said she would cry so much from missing her that when she saw her, she just kind of had to teach herself to numb her herself and her feelings from her daughter because it was too hard, too much to bear. And of course her daughter felt that. That's why her daughter feels so disconnected because you numbed your feelings toward her. Good or bad, you weren't being authentic with her, right? So we see, and again, I feel like this also could have been a two episode series or whatever, you know what I mean? Because there's just so many myths, there are so many parts that were disconnected that we could put together and, and kind of piece together the whole picture because it's just like, oh my goodness, it's so much. And it's so interesting how people, some people, they are so numb that they say this with no emotion. You know, my mom left, she gave me up for adoption, my dad, da, da, da. And then that has to feel, and also when your mother has seven kids gave away the eighth kid you know and then and ayana brings up like what do you i mean you're questioning that decision but think about it you really think that she was making good decisions or was able to even handle you having seven kids already you know what i mean and and lunell does seem very cutthroat like yeah she could have done that um she talks about the abuse from her aunt's husband he was very mean to her he was abusive and she talks about she's, i cannot process somebody having a heart and not protecting a child so here is where they didn't agree, right? So Ayana is saying, well, it wasn't about you. It wasn't personal, right? People sometimes don't know how to deal with things like that that are going on. We don't know. We weren't able to talk to the aunt. Was the aunt afraid of her husband? Was the aunt, was there a reason why she could not 
confront her husband and get him to stop abusing her niece. We don't know. And Ayana is just trying to say, look from the other, the people that you're blaming, look at their perspective. Do they even know enough? Like, is, was it abuse or was it just we grew up getting beat, you know, beat, beat down by our parents and we turned out fine, so I'm going to let him beat her because she's bad or whatever it is. Mind you, I don't call kids bad. That's a whole nother meeting. I, I can do a whole nother um, video on that, but that's a, a different situation. So, we don't know. Basically, the whole thing is we don't know what was behind her not getting Lunel out of that situation. Not to excuse it, but just to see a different perspective, right? And so Lunel is saying, you know, and so she's saying, like, people don't know how to deal with, also with you, Lunel. They don't know how to deal with you because you're not, your emotions are so numb, right? And... She also talks about people are sometimes powerless to protect you. And that's why I'm thinking, was this man also abusive to the aunt? And Lunel wasn't aware. Um, Ayana talks about when she was raped as a nine-year-old and nobody, she told her aunt and her aunt said that didn't happen, sent her upstairs and it was never talked about again. And Lunel said, that doesn't make any sense because if she had a heart, she would try to protect you. And Ayana is saying, I can't blame her for that because she did not have the tools to help me. She didn't know what to do. She didn't know how to deal with the situation. Whatever it was, that was how she dealt with it. But I can't be upset at her. I'm, if, I don't know who I agree with. I understand what she's saying. I don't know that I can support or agree with it. I really have to think hard on it. I get that people don't have the tools or the ability sometimes to deal with certain things. But I would have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. You know what I mean? I can't just go all in on that statement. I understand where Lunel is coming from, being the abused person. Nobody helped me. Nobody saved me. So I am upset at my aunt. I am upset at my mom, my dad, my everybody, because I was left in this situation. So people don't know how to deal with Lunel and her numb emotions, which I can understand. Because some people, when we don't know how they're going to react to something, we just kind of step back. We say, okay, you know, we, we just we walk on eggshells around them. We don't know how they're going to react, so we don't even want to push them either way, right? So she talks about Lunel needing, Lunel says, I needed to be numb to go to work. Um, and, you know, I think they agree that she had to be numb to, like, leave her child. So, you know, Ayana's saying, for, in order for you to go to work and leave your child, you had to be numb. Because those are a lot of feelings that come up every time you leave her. So you have to go to work now and make people laugh and pretend to be a happy, jolly-go-lucky person when really you're really hurting inside. So, yeah, you had to do this. This was your way of survival in the life that you have. This, is what, this was the way you were making money to take care of your child. So you had to numb yourself in order to perform, right? So stop blaming yourself for whatever it is you feel guilty for. I think that was what I was taking from that situation. So now Ayana is preparing the daughter to talk to her mother. She gives her a whole pass to say whatever curses, whatever she needs to do to get it out. And Lunel is going to allow her to speak and not intervene and not be nasty to her. And, you know, she, the daughter very now timid because she's talking to her mother remember she is nervous and afraid about opening up to her because she is afraid that that Lunel is going to attack her because that's what the way that she has dealt with her expressing herself in the past right because she feels attacked so but the daughter was able to say I felt abandoned I this is why I have a hard time physically helping you pack because I'm literally helping you leave me you know what I mean and that's the way she conceptualized conceptualized it as a child I was helping you to leave me. So I still don't even like for you to help you pack because you're leaving me. And it's just something repetitively that reminds you that my mommy is going to be gone. And that's kind of deep to me. That was really sad. Um, she told her mother, you're controlling. You're selfish and you don't understand or know who I am. So mom is controlling probably because, again, she was, was out of control in her past, right? There were so many things going on, factors that went on around her that she was not in control of. Literally not in control of her life. She wasn't in control of being adopted, being uh, born to a mother who had eight kids, her, her dad dying before she got there, her uncle's abuse, um, not in control in a way of having to go to work and leave her daughter, not in control of her daughter's life. So now she's in a place where she can be controlling she's gonna take it to the max right and um she's selfish they don't know each other i'm sure they don't know each other because a lot of people live in very surface level relationships with family members where it's like you know he 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 ha 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 let's go to mcdonald's let's go to a restaurant let's eat da, da, da. but nobody's really ever dealing with the issues right and lunel was honest with her and she said you know my daughter comes before anything and then 
was it Ayana or her? And she said, or either she said, before anything except for my job. And that was sad. But she was honest about it and helped, and she took accountability for it. And then they ended up, um, you know, meeting in the middle and the whole thing and moving forward. I think that their relationship got better. So that was, it was a pretty good episode, even though she was a celebrity. I know there was something she addressed um, the episode after, and I didn't get to see that. What was, what were her thoughts about being on the show with Ayana? Because now for some reason, everybody is going to YouTube after they meet with Ayana and talking about all the editing and all the things that they didn't like about the show. So maybe I'll, I'll take some time to uh, see that, but I barely have any time these days. Um, but I thought it was a pretty good episode. It seemed like it was um, situations that a lot of people do deal with as far as relationship issues with their mothers and daughters and the whole thing. So, you know, I liked it. Either way, let me know what you think. Comment, like, subscribe. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for joining Reality with T.